Ripple XRP, so we have now stopped doing this. David Schwartz has cleared the air in relation to the sales of Ripple because a few people have been talking about the fact that Ripple have been manipulating the price. So we will be taking a look at this. We will also be having a look at some fake news by Elizabeth Warren and what she thinks about the crypto industry. Not only that, but the president of Ripple, Monica Long, does have some predictions about 2024 and what that breakthrough will be. In addition to that, we will also be having a look at the digital euro and their plans, as well as the price action for XRP and XLM coin. So all I ask from you are two things, which is to smash that like button and to subscribe to the channel as well. So we have this recent tweet from David Schwartz just on the 16th of February. And basically he cleared the air and he told everyone that they have now stopped programmatic sales of XRP. So programmatic basically just means the fact that those sales were happening using an automated system of them, for example, when it hits a certain price point. And you'll see over here in the recent report that it was covered that last quarter, the total XRP sales by Ripple net of purchases were 361.06 million versus 226.31 million in the previous quarter and Ripple has continued to sell XRP only in connection with ODL transactions and since 2020 Ripple has sourced XRP from the open market to ensure there is a sufficient supply of XRP available for our growing ODL business and that they continually strive to minimize undue market impact with their purchases by limiting how much and from whom we purchase XRP. So there have been a few people saying that people have been dumping on the escrow. And you'll see over here that David Schwartz has said that he doesn't believe that their programmatic sales of XRP has manipulated the price in any way. I mean, maybe people are coming up with another theory now because obviously the price action of XRP has been down for quite a while. And he says that they believe they have made every attempt to minimize the price impact of their programmatic sales. And again, what would be their motive for manipulating the price? If anything, it would be better if the price went up for Ripple. But just to show you some more evidence we have over here from XRP drops in relation to the sales and when they actually stopped doing it. So you'll see over here that in quarter four of 2019, ever since then, we basically haven't seen anything happen, right? So the last time that we have was in quarter three, 2019 at 16.1 million. And this was the last time that we had these sales. Of course, it was 144 million back in quarter two of 2019. But ever since then, nothing has happened. And so I do think that this is very strong evidence. I mean, maybe people are coming out now because of the price. And Linda Jones has spoken about this as well on the 17th of February. All this concern that XRP will never rise in price is debunked with David Schwartz comments in a space about how countries didn't want another country creating a new world reserve currency because it gives that country too much control over others. And they would, however, agree on a trustless system where no country was in control. And he said if, as a result, a few people got wealthy, meaning XRP holders, it wouldn't be a problem. I mean, at the end of the day, when it comes to the price action of XRP, for the past two days, it has been in the green, it's gone up, but still people are questioning whether or not the price action has been manipulated and I think that is the reason as to why there is a lot of concern because there is a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the price right and we are still in that lawsuit that we really have to conclude now for this year I think that will happen it's just going to come down to what the conclusion of that will be and in terms of the settlement that will be decided by the courts and the SEC will be looking into it as well but the thing is the price action has been frustrated with XRP I know this I think you know this by now and we are obviously not seeing these 30 or 40 percent gains it has been quite a while but the good thing that we are seeing is a lot more partnerships and Ripple are expanding as well especially with their services in the US and they do have the money transmitter licenses so it's not like as if we don't have anything going on for us because we really do it's just unfortunately the fact that we have been held down by these circumstances over here from XRP drops we have Elizabeth Warren fake news and new SDC compliance so we know that Elizabeth Warren has said before that digital assets firms in the US are attempting to subvert anti-money laundering and terrorist finance laws. And of course, her claims are absolutely outrageous. She basically says that the whole of crypto is used for illicit finance, but she never addresses the fact that the US dollar is also in complicit within these criminal activities and more so than crypto. And so let's take a look at the measures that they're trying to put in to combat this. Senator Elizabeth Warren in December of last year claimed that digital asset firms in the United States are attempting to subvert anti-money laundering and terrorist finance laws. I believe that her claims are frankly blatantly false and I think it is important to remind the public of all the work that your companies do to prevent illicit finance. Circle is the largest US based stablecoin issuer. Would you also provide an overview of Circle's anti-money laundering compliance program and describe the additional regulatory requirements that Circle must comply with? 
A lot of it overlaps with what my colleague at Coinbase said is in his compliance program. We do robust KYC, uh, sanction screening, SAR filing reports. These are all the aspects that a traditional financial firm has as well. Circle is regulated as a money transmitter in 48 states and jurisdictions. We're registered with FinCEN. These are the same type of regulations that PayPal and Venmo also comply with. We also employ blockchain analytics. Uh, so we use um, the ability to look at transactions on chain so that we can see uh, illicit activity that might be using USDC, the stablecoin that we issue. Uh, and we're able to work with law enforcement uh, when we see that activity or they alert us to activity as well. So it's not like as if they're not doing anything from this. I mean, they already have protocols in place in order to detect that illicit activity. And so Elizabeth Warren's claims is basically just fake news. And that is the reason as to why I think that she won't be passing the bill on cryptocurrency. And I don't think that she has passed one single bill at her time at Congress. So it will be very unlikely in relation to that. Over here, we have from Ripple, as an industry, our mindset must be that compliance is non-negotiable. Let's take a look at the insights and perspectives from Monica Long, our Ripple president. You'll see over here that in 2024, she believes that crypto will break the speculative hype cycles that have defined the booms and busts for the industry since Bitcoin's invention. And the biggest breakthrough in 2024 will be pioneering compliance for decentralized finance. Now, of course, compliance is not really a sexy topic to even talk about because people want to talk about hype and growth and things like that. But when it comes to compliance, it does seem a bit boring. However, despite the process being long and arduous, I definitely think that if we bring compliance into the industry and we are able to get that regulation, then this will make sure that crypto will be able to pop off. And in terms of her predictions, she says that compliance will foster real utility and mass adoption option which requires integration with existing infrastructure and systems and the way forward is a happy marriage and that's what we've always believed of course we're going to see more adoption when we have that compliance because it will enable financial institutions to be able to hold these digital assets and she says you cannot transform how society moves manages tokenizes and stores value if you don't understand the foundations and history of the problem. Before we have a look at price action for today, I just want to show you this video that we have from the executive board member, Piro, and he basically talks about the digital euro and how it's going to bring benefits to the European region. We celebrate this year 25 years of euros. We can trade everything in Europe, but when it comes to pay, we are still stuck to national solutions. After 25 years, if you want to roll out this, this scheme based on instant payment, the digital euro will be an opportunity because of the rule book. You just need to, you know, to, to use the same standard and you will be able to roll out. The railroad is there, put your train and you can reach anybody you want. You don't need to construct your own railroad to reach people we celebrate this year and he's basically saying that we already have the foundation done we just need to make that digital euro come into play so then we can use it across the european region it's definitely going to build those bridges in terms of trading activity so with the price action of xrp coin today we are currently trading at 0.5581 we are up by 0.76 percent on the one day chart for the 24 hour volume we are down by 19.47 we are trading at $882.3 million in the volume. In the earlier hours of the morning for today, we were trading at 0.5503, so at that lower end of 55 cents. On the seven day chart, we are up nicely at 4.81%. I mean, in the beginning of the week, on the 12th of February, we were trading at 0.5177, so it's basically a three to four cent move. And then on the 14th of February at 0.5377, the highest that we went to was a nice 0.5769, just under 58 cents on the 16th of February. We've come down a bit now, but that is expected when you go on a bit of a rally. On the one month chart, we are doing pretty well now, only down by 0.83%. And in the beginning of February, we were trading at 0.4936. So it's basically a five to six cent move from over there. We didn't break anywhere below that. And so that's shown really good signs. I definitely wanna see some support within the 53 cent mark. I think we may come down a bit after we just had that rally. For Stellar XLM coin, we're currently trading at 0.115, so in the mid-range of 11 cents. We are up by 1.3% on the one-day chart. For the week, we are up by 2.2%. And we started off on the week at 11 cents, and now we're gradually going to that 12 cent mark. On the month, we are up by 0.9%. 
and we are basically mirroring what happened on the 30th of January and we have passed that ever so slightly. Let's see if we can find a support level in the next couple of days at the mid range of 11 cents before we are able to head off to the 12 cent mark. Guys, if you want daily Ripple XRP and Stellar XLM coin news, subscribe to the channel and like the video as well.